How we doing everybody? This is That Our Nerd, and I'm doing a little quick tutorial on how to make a function to find p-values from z-scores. Uh, there's not really a good one within R, and it's, it's really easy and quick to make one. So let's go through. So let's call this function z-test, right? So we're gonna say this is our function, and our parameters that we need in here is x, we need our mu, we need standard deviation, we need our sample size, and we need, is this a one or a two-tailed test, right? So we'll plug all this stuff in. Um, and once we do, we need to find a z-score from that, right? So we'll say z is equal to our x minus mu divided by uh, our standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size, right? This is just our basic formula, x bar minus mu over standard deviation over the square root of n, right? Um, so that finds us our z. And then from there, uh, we need to see, is this a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, right? Because that's going to change our, our p-value. So we'll check. We'll say if our tailed is equal to 1, right? So we're checking, is our tailed equal to 1? And if it is, we're going to return. We're not going to ret run. We're going to return uh, cat, right? So this is just going to make a sentence really for us on here that it prints out. And we'll say our z-score. We don't have that yet, so that would be helpful to know, right? Our z-score is uh, z, right? Our z that we found up here is our z-score. And then we'll go make a new line. We don't want this all on one line. That would look kind of ugly, right? Our p-value is, and then we'll do p norm negative absolute value z, right? That's our, this is our normal thing that we use to get our, our uh, p-value. Um, so that's gonna be if it's a one-tailed test. But what happens if it's a two-tailed test? Is equal to two. Well, it's going to be pretty similar to this stuff, except for what are we going to do to our p-value? Well, we're going to double it, right? Because we're looking at two tails. And finally, for our last situation, it's it's good practice to to make sure that you're not doing uh, a wrong amount of tails, right? So we'll check if tailed is not equal to one, uh, or that's what this vertical pipe is for, or tailed is not equal to two, then we're gonna return, uh, this can only be one or one or two tailed, right? So this is our function here. Let's run that stuff <clears throat> and let's put in some stuff. So we'll t say z test, and then our parameters for this, we'll say our x bar is six, our mu is five, our sd is two, our n, our sample size is 20, and we wanna do one tailed test here. Well, if you plug that in, that's going to spit out that our z-score is equal to 2.23, right? And our p-value is 0 0.01. Pretty neat, right? Let's say we want to switch that to a two-tailed test. Well, our z-score is still the same, right? Our tail doesn't affect our z-score, uh, but it does affect our p-value. It multiplies this stuff by two. What about if we wanted a three-tailed test, which doesn't exist, right? That means uh, it can only be a one or a two-tailed test. Uh, so that's pretty helpful, right? Um, but maybe you already have the z-score, right? You don't want to put all this extra stuff up here um, and find the z-score yourself. So let's make a new function. It's called z-test1. And this is a function. And now our parameters, all we're going to need is our z-score and whether or not it's one or two-tailed. Right? And then we can pretty much take all this stuff down. I mean, this is more or less going to be it, right? Except for we don't care about the z-score. Why would we print that out again? That's not helpful, right? Seeing as how we already gave the z-score. And let's get rid of the new line there. And that's gonna be pretty much it. So let's run this and hope it, uh, hope it runs first time, right? So z-test one, and let's put 1.96 in here and a two-tailed test, right? Because this one we should know. This is gonna be 5%, our p-value is 0.05 here. And so we run it and it's 0 0.0499, perfect. And again, we can make this a one-tailed test. We could try to make it a three-tailed test, but that will fail, right? And we could put any z-score in here, no matter how small, blah, 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 right? That's gonna find us a p-value for that z-score, right? So you can plug whatever z-score in here, whatever tailed it is. So this function would be really helpful if you have a lot of z-scores that you're trying to plug in and, and figure out. Okay, I hope this video was of help. If it was, make sure to subscribe um, and you can get more videos similar to this one. 
Uh, also, please press that like button. It helps other people find the video. Um, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Hope this helped. Have a good day.